Good morning. Morning, Hi, good morning. Good morning, Tyra. Good morning. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Attorney Shulman. I'm sitting in for Attorney Aiden oh. today. So if you need any assistance, I'm here for you. Thank you. I like your sweater. Thank you. Happy <laughs> Valentine's Day, Happy everyone. Valentine's Day. <laughs> Same to everyone. <laughs> We'll wait just another minute before we start. I think we um, take a roll call, take a roll call and um, call the meeting to order. I am Alicia Zalka, present, chairperson. Arlene Ormagis, present. Jan O'Neill, present. Jeannie Scranton Lloyd, present. So we have all four board members, so that's a, a quorum. So welcome everyone, good morning. Uh, we're calling the meeting to order at 9.31 a.m. And uh, we'd like to, let's get started. Uh, we'll start with uh, the minutes. Can we please review the minutes? Thank you for providing those to us. Are there any corrections, deletions, or additions to discuss from our meeting of November, of, excuse me, November 15th, 2023? If there are no additions, deletions, or corrections, I will make a motion to approve the minutes for our November 15th, 2023 meeting. I make a motion to approve these minutes. And I will and second it, Arlene Romagis. <coughs> and can we vote all to accept the minutes as presented? Uh, yeah. Aye. Yes. Arlene Ormages, yes. Jan O'Neill, yes. Jeannie Lloyd, yes. Excellent. The minutes have been approved and we'll move on to our agenda items. We'll start with our DPH updates. And the first on the list to, re mm -hmm. to review today is the process for proctor compensation. Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Chris Andresen. The Chief Good morning. Good morning Chris. And investigations at DPH. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, no problem. Anytime. And um, so with the, I, I assume you're talking about delays in the proctors getting um, their payment. So that's, that's, um, it's not unique to these proctors. There's, um, there's been a huge turnover in our fiscal office. I think like 95% of the staff there right now are like been there less than a year. So, so then there's a lot of new folks. So there's, a lot of sort of um, backlog in getting payments made and we're aware of it and the department's working on it. So um, so that's just kind of the situation right now, but it's, it's again, it's not unique to these proctors and we apologize for the delay, but there's just been a lot of um, change. So. I, and we fully- Excuse me, go ahead, Jeff. No, no, go ahead. I was gonna say, we certainly understand that, but the some of the proctors that we use are they're take well they're all usually taking a day off from work and they don't want to do it for the next exam because they said we haven't been paid in a year for the whole year of 2023 so i'm just telling you it's it's getting difficult i did get three for june and they said if we don't get paid the other money we may not come so i'm just telling you that all right yeah thank you for that thank you it's just very difficult to get them as it is so yeah no i get it thank you and and to be honest with you they give up a whole day's work to go do there for a hundred dollars they make that in an hour it's yeah, like yeah. it's it's a, a labor of love to make sure that the the 
associate the um, state provides good service. That's what they are. And so it's very hard for us to even ask them, even traveling. Some of them travel so far. Not one proctor lives in Naugatuck. So, I mean, it's, they're all traveling. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. So Chris, the bill goes to you and then you hand it in. That's the procedure. No, no, it goes. No. Um, I mean, I've been involved with these ones because they've been delayed, but um, we have like office assistants that work on processing um, invoices. Okay, so there's no department that we can, we as a board can call, just you can call and say, see what the process is. What do you mean? There's nothing for us to do that we can call on our behalf no, or no, the no, people no. that are we're waiting aware. for their we've, money we've, can call right. to speed it up. We've moved the invoices along with a bunch of other ones and it's within the department's um, fiscal services and they're they're working on um, getting payments cut up. Okay. Well, if there's a way to extend to the, the proctors that we appreciate their service and that this has been brought up and we're, we're uh, concerned and that yep. might at least uh, rally some favor <laughs> and we thank we them have. for their service. We have, yes. Okay. We, we did um, that for the last three exams. Yeah. Gotcha. I'll touch base <laughs> with um, Celeste and see if we can get their names and um, yeah. You know, oh, Celeste has out. their name. We have emailed her several times about them. Right, but I said I was going to contact her so that we could contact them and give them yeah. an update. Yes. That's okay. Because I know she has the contact information. So. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you so much for that input. Uh, let's go moving on now to investigations update. Um, what is that? Typically, with our investigations update, we just asked, uh, we ask the um, DPH if, if there are any ongoing uh, or new investigations that we should know about within our board. Uh, well, that our board <laughs> realizes within the field of electrology. Okay. Anything that we should um, be aware of as far as. Yeah, I apologize. I don't have that update right now. Um, I know we do not get a, many um, electrology complaints, but um, if we have any, I can. I can verify that one exists, but I can't give okay. you any more information than that. Chris, could I just say years back, Gary Griffin, before he left, used to come in and he would say there's no investigations or he would give us a very little something. He didn't tell us everything, you know what I was saying? And I know for a fact that the CSEA Connecticut Association has put in a complaint well over a year ago concerning a girl who failed our exam. I, I'm, I don't know the exact number, Celeste could tell you, but at least five or six times. And she has been practicing for nine years, okay? And we found out about it and we reported it to the state and it's still on her website and she is still doing that again, continuing to do it. And it, we reported it well over a year ago. So okay. I, I'm just trying to- I really trying can't to discuss talk. cases with a board that may adjudicate them later, so. Okay, okay. But I, I, I will tell you, I got a call yesterday from two electrologists who said there is another girl in the Danbury area who is putting up billboards that she's a licensed and certified electrologist in New York. She, she doesn't have the CPE certification. She's not licensed in Connecticut and she's got a business and that's all gonna be sent in too. A lot of them are doing this now and they are not licensed by our state. So I'm just telling you this is happening and is it, you know, it, the girl's still practicing for, for 10 years now. And I thought, according it's to one of the general st statuses, a license in the state. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear what you were saying. It's probably because it's almost impossible to get the license in the state of Connecticut. How is it yeah. possible? Because I don't know. Well, maybe oh, missing maybe people. The, the there's 15 pending people sitting in the state of Connecticut right now that have no licenses that are pending, which means that they've failed your state test 
including five from the last exam. When six people took the exam, five people failed it. One person passed it who's from New York. I'm sorry, who's speaking? My name is Holly, and I'm a parent of one of the people um, that have taken the state exam. Well, actually didn't take it, was failed from the beginning on a question. And we'll get into this later, whenever new business or whatever comes up. Yes, yeah. um, uh, thank you for that. Um, you will get an opportunity, um, but at this moment, there's just an investigations update that is on the agenda. And um, we appreciate uh, that information, but could you just, uh, in the future, when you speak again, just identify yourself, please? Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, so investigations update. Um, we will look forward to uh, perhaps at our next meeting, just to, uh, just to awareness of whether there are any investigations. We, of course, we don't. We will not discuss details. Uh, but whether there are any ongoing investigations, we're looking forward to hearing about that um, for our next meeting. Moving on to licensing examination dates, what our next uh, schedule is, I believe, is it June? Yes, that's June eight, June 18th. Thank you very much. June 18th, 2024 is the next exam date. And now moving on to licensing scores. Yeah, this is Chris. So, um, so at the department, we've been looking at some of the, um, I mean, most professions have sort of the national exam <clears throat> that is the examination required for licensure, but there is a handful of professions that have sort of homegrown examinations um, that are administered. And we've been looking at the scores for some of those and um, you know, including the electrology exam. And I went back and um, I think the, the person on the um, on the phone had um, contacted the department. And, you know, so I went, and we were looking at this stuff anyways, but I went back and I looked and I noticed that the um, practical examination um, uh, pass rate is very low. Um, it is. It's less than 50%. Um, so typically, um, you know, there's there's two things that are that are the issue. Typically, if there's low exam rates, one is that the programs themselves are not appropriately training students. Um, so there's right. approved programs that folks go to, um, and perhaps um, they're not appropriately training folks. And then the other thing that we look at is perhaps there's something with the test. Um, that's a barrier to folks passing. So, um, you know, for example, the the in the nursing in the nursing field, um, the nursing um, the nursing board approves uh, nursing programs within the state of Connecticut. And if there's a nursing program whose student pass rate is less than eighty percent, um, that program will go on probation. And if they continue to have a pass rate of below 80%, they'll be taken off um, and not counted towards, um, um, you know, qualification for licensure. And so I've been looking at some different professions, including electrology. And what I see with electrology is, um, you know, these folks have attended a, a program approved by the board, um, and then they take the national exam um, and pass that before they get to take the practical exam, which seems to be the spot where, um, you know, people that have either, you know, they've completed a program, they pass the national exam, which includes a lot of the components, um, you know, infection control and stuff like that. And then we get to the state exam and, you know, less than half of them pass. So, so what I would like to do is over the next, um, you know, before the next examination schedule, uh, a meeting with a few of you um, just to kind of discuss the examination and, um, you know, look at tweaking it um, and look at see how we administer it, how it's scored um, and, you know, and, and go from there and perhaps, you know, make some adjustments for the next um, <coughs> round of examination so that we can, um, 
you know, provide folks an opportunity that have gone through the training, that have passed the national exam to um, be more likely to be successful um, completing the examination um, in Connecticut in order to get licensed. Chris, we had Can gone I in an executive session before and we had, um, I don't wanna say dummy down the wording, but we had made it so much clearer than it was to be explaining what the question was actually asking and we even gave them options of go, reading it to them in case anybody had a problem with the test to explain it. So I know we can go in executive session to, you know, at any time to do that with you, and that's no problem. But I just want everybody to know on here, we do everything we possibly can to help these new practitioners coming out to be qualified and, and great. We want them to pass. We do everything possible to help them pass. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that, and and I went and I looked um, at numbers going back, and you know, and and I'm just concerned that um, you know, you know, just, the numbers are concerning. Um, it's true. So we'd like it's to, um, you know, and and when there's and it's this isn't the only board or profession where this happens. I mean, we just had an issue with social work licensure exam where folks were, you know about 40% pass rate among some folks. And um, we removed that requirement. We said, this is this is not a fair exam. So now it's no longer a requirement for licensure. The legislature removed it. Um, not that I'm saying that's what we're doing here, but this does come up. And, you know, when it does, when we're looking at, um, you know, sort of licensure, somebody's right to work, um, you know, it's important that we um, kind of reevaluate, especially when we see um, test scores that aren't sort of, you know, supporting most people that seem to have gone through every single step. Um, and then the, the, the stumbling point for them is the, um, the, this, this examination. So, um, I'd appreciate it if, you know, if we reach out to you and maybe sit down with a couple of you or an executive session, I didn't even think of the executive mm -hmm. session. Um, May I please see? May I please speak? Who's this? My name is Melissa. And I know that when the RNs go for their practical, because I've talked to ones that just finished, they are not dismissed in the middle of a test in front of everybody for one mistake. They are told what the mistake was and they pass. Now these girls are being dismissed for just one or two questions during the practical when they've already passed the other test and this is so unfair to these girls and some of these girls are taking these tests over and over and over again and they're still flunking them so guess what some of these girls have actually moved to another state so our state isn't going to get the tax money from these girls who are willing to work here and pay taxes here because these girls cannot pass and they're moving to Massachusetts or New York because they cannot pass our exam. Okay, ma'am, right. excuse something me. Something is not right. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, once again, could you please identify yourself? I, I said who I was. My name is Melissa and I'm a licensed- Okay, I, I, are you here as a, a parent of, of, of a student that has taken the exam? Is that what you're st stating? I'm stating that I'm a licensed electrologist for 30 years and I understand what's going on. I've been hearing it from okay. all kinds of girls. Okay, and so uh, board chair, uh, uh, and I Dr. Zalka, uh, it's, it's up to you. Do you want to hear this at this point or do you wanna put this on a different agenda? I just feel like women- One moment, or, please. Or yes. girl to this is a, excuse me. You're, I'm sorry, but this is a formal meeting. Yes, thank you. And thank you. Yes, thank you. I appreciate that very much. Um, I do think it's um, the. I do. I would like to hear what uh, is being discussed. I would like to move through our agenda items and then save that for the end, if that's reasonable for everyone. This is Arlene. I think part of this goes along with the approved schools of electrology. Right. That's, that's why I'd like to go through the remainder of our agenda items. Up these two items because this is, we feel it is important and people are not doing well and we have tried to bend over backwards we give them a written test they fail it 
we bring them in the hall and talk to them if they can talk through it. Some people don't understand English. We try and get it, get them. We don't. Uh, what do I want to say? Prod them, but we we try to get them to say, well, what do you do? We try to ask them questions, trying to get them to pass. It, they're not. They do infection control is not being taught properly let's, in the schools. Yeah, let's finish okay, up. So this is Holly. I'm a parent of one of the the students. I'm sorry. That, this that kid. I'm I'm sorry, Miss Holly. We have, we have this, to maintain. We have to get um, through this agenda. We yes. have to stay on point. But the board chair has indicated that you may get an opportunity to speak. Yes. Um, but we will have to have a motion to add that to the agenda. Okay. Okay, well, this should have been prior because I've been in contact with Chris from the state of Connecticut for three months now since this last test happened. And he told me that this is the forum to come and speak what I need to speak. And, and we're not and we're not deprived. Ma'am, excuse that. me. I apologize here. Uh, Ryan Burns, I'm the, the new deputy legal director here at DPH. I was just uh, hoping to listen in. Um, if you're a member of the public and not a member of the board, it's really not appropriate to speak until you've been recognized by the chair. I would uh, ask that you please recognize that decorum. Um, the chair has indicated she may hear you uh, at a later point in the meeting, but I'd ask you please respect the uh, proceedings that are going on here. Thank okay, you. I see what's going on. Thank you. Thank you for, for jumping in. Um, I, I would like to continue our, I would like to continue our agenda as outlined. And then I will make a motion to hear uh, the public comments. So let's move on, please. To So please hold your comments until you've been recognized. So I'd like to move on now to um, our next agenda item, which is approved schools of electrology. Okay, Arlene, I brought this up because the schools get approved, but they send in a thing a notice and say, yes, we'll teach all this. I don't believe they are. Not when you see these people come out. They are. They certainly are not teaching good infection control. People don't, don't know the difference of a lot of things. It's just, it's sad because these girls, this is gonna be their livelihood and they cannot work. Now, someone called me and said there was a school in New Jersey, I believe, that has a one-on-one. -on -one. She's not really a teacher and it's not really a school, but she got approved in 2012. And she said, can I go to that? Cause I can make my schedule with her alone rather than going to a school. I said, if it's on the list and it's approved and she teaches what she says she teaches, yes, you can. But I, I don't really know that she should have been approved. She may have been approved at one point because someone came from another state or had gone there and asked if they could take the exam and then the person, you know, wrote up. But the, I don't know where, what, but it doesn't seem like the schools are teaching what they used to teach at all. And presenting this to the board today, what actions um, can you see us Taking I don't to... know. Uh, once they're approved, should they, can we, if we have questions, can we check on them? I mean, Steve says they're approved, they're approved. And, um, you know, but 20 years later, if there's all different teachers that they're not teaching the right things to these girls, these people are paying good money to go to these schools. And yes, there's, they're passing some of the state tests that, I mean, the big, uh, AEA tests. However, we are told that they've been given all the answers to those, so they know the answers to those tests. I don't know this for a fact, but I just see it in our state, and it, it, it's it's sad to send these people home. So I I think we got to be a little more onto the schools. Also, is what I'm saying. As a board, what um, what action can we take, or do you suggest that we take to uh, get in touch with the schools? I don't know if the state has to go in and approve or ask them for their credentials again, what they're showing. I mean, a one-on-one -on -one is not really a school. Um, and 
if that's okay with the state and you know it's been approved but that was in 2012 she's still working one on one she didn't open a school that's just one in instance but some of the schools again we see they're not teaching the right things not not Connecticut requirements they may be somebody else's requirements or another state but they aren't teaching our requirements Mr. Andresen, is there someone that you feel that would be the right person to uh, invite to our next meeting to help us with this inquiry? In other words, is this something that we can put on our agenda for our next meeting and, and review this? Yeah, I mean, I'll have to look closer at the school approval statute, um, but I, we, someone, either me or someone else can come back um, okay. with okay. an update and um, take a look at what that process might be for you all. Okay, excellent. Thank you. So this will we'll make sure that this is an agenda item for our next mm -hmm. meeting. All right, we'll move on to our final agenda item before we invite uh, um, the public comments. Um, a pro proposed regulation revision for certified electrologists. Hello everyone, it's Dante here from the uh, policy office. I think I met with your board in the past and we discussed your desired regs changes and I'm happy to share that they've been through our internal review process and have been approved by the commissioner. So hopefully you had a chance to look at the proposed revisions and if anyone has any feedback, I'm happy to hear it now or uh, receive any uh, written feedback before we move these along. This is early. Mm -hmm. um i just have a question where it sure. says definitions face-to-face sure. -face instruction means in person live does that also include remote because it doesn't say that face-to-face -face instruction has been removed so anything that's bracketed is coming out so when you look at this i know it's a little confusing if you're not familiar with the way that regs are revised but um, new language will be underlined and then if you see those brackets on either side that means that that definition is coming out and that was uh -huh. done in order to allow for the online okay okay yeah so mm -hmm. online is acceptable That's absolutely and okay. i think it even says so i think we added specific language where we said um in 20-275B-3, it says continuing educations may include courses or activities that qualify and are conducted online. So like of the list of things okay. that you've already, you know, provided for being qualifying activities, if those things happen online, they're acceptable. That's perfectly fine. I just want right. to clarify. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or Thank comments? You. No. Thank you so much. Great. Okay. Well, we um, we'll go to. ahead and see happen for a while. Thank you. Great. Yep. So I'll keep the board updated as it moves through. Um, eventually it will come up for public comment. Uh, don't anticipate any surprising comments, but we'll just stay in touch as it moves through the um, external review process, which can take some time because it does ultimately need legislative approval um, by the reg regulation review committee. So it does take some time to go through that. But what you see is probably what will come out the other end. <laughs> Great. Thank okay. you. Sure. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. If there are no other uh, comments regarding the items we just handled, I would like to make a motion to uh, enter new business into the agenda and uh, I, so that we can hear public comments from our guests. Um, may, I'd like to make that motion. Any who second? I will second it, Arlene. And may we all vote on it? I vote Alicia Zalka. Arlene yes. yes. Jan O'Neill, yes. Arlene? Oh, I said yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Jean, um, Jean, Jean. Did we lose Jean? It looks like she's still on. Jean, are you uh, are you muted? Are you on mute? mute? Mm. You hit star six, Jean. If you're on your phone, that should unmute yourself. 
Thank you, Tara. Hello? Yes. That's oh, you. yes. Oh, I, well, I guess um, I did say yes, but I guess okay. you didn't hear it. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we have a unanimous uh, vote to invite speakers from our panel, from our guest gallery. Um, will you please, one by one, uh, when you want to speak, please introduce yourself and your connection to um, today's meeting. And for the record, it has to be a full name. Okay. So now is the time that you may bring up your concerns, both Melissa and Holly. All right, Melissa Brell. I'm a licensed electrologist for 30 years. I've talked to many of these young girls, uh, young middle-aged girls who cannot pass the test. It's very disappointing what I've been hearing, especially since I've been in this field for 30 years. And these girls, some of them, I've seen their work. Um, I know that they passed the written with a high score. I also know that nurses, they never get kicked out or dismissed during the test just for missing one or two questions during the practical. And I also know that dental hygienists don't even do a practical anymore, and many other professions don't either. And that some and this is a very tedious profession. So some girls do get more nervous because they're, you know, on for everyone who's there. But I also know that being dismissed for one or two things when you can just tell them, okay, you know, this was wrong. It's not like they missed five or six or whatever. They only missed one or two. How can you flunk somebody just for that? How do you know when that, Melissa? They don't do that either. I mean, when you go for an RN, they don't get, they don't flunk for that for two long things, whether it be sterilization or whatever, they don't flunk for that. But electrologists do. It doesn't make sense to me. I'm trying to figure out how you decide that they only had one or two because no one's notified of one or two or 10 that, that they got wrong when the girls oh, well, actually take I, the exam. I know, I know that some of these girls were dismissed within 15 minutes. They didn't even get to finish the exam. You don't even allow them to finish. No, that's, that's incorrect, 100% incorrect. They finished the written test and they were hand, they are handed to a state employee Not who written. actually views I'm it. About, I'm talking about the practical. You've dismissed your girls after yep. one or two wrong questions. They no, that's not, that's not correct. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Melissa. I don't know where you're getting your information from that, but that is incorrect. Because all the girls, no. And I've heard it for years. I, I haven't just heard it this test. I've been hearing it for the past five years. So there's something well, wrong. I don't understand what the information just, you're receiving. Yes, I would just ask that if someone is going to speak to please speak from personal knowledge, uh, right. not from, from just right, information just that you're hearing. If you have personally witnessed this, if you, even if it was your own daughter who experienced this, that's even closer, but please do not get on here to say what you've heard. Please provide your own personal knowledge. Well, I do have personal knowledge. Okay, so if you can um, attest to About being present during a, an exam and witnessing this I, type I of conduct. Somebody, somebody, I, somebody I'm very close to was there and saw it. It's been, it's been going on. I don't know how you people are benefiting from this. I don't, you're, you're only allowing one girl to pass every single time. I've been hearing this from everyone. And some people, this is Jan O'Neill, has some people yeah. have taken this test three or four times and have, pa yeah. have failed multiple different in. We, as okay. an, and, and let me explain something. As an instructor there, we do not tell you if you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, wrong that no one tells anybody that. I don't know where you're getting that information, but we have never done that, okay? This is Whitney Sol. I was at the test cool. and I was failed by one question. I know that your curriculum is not up to date and not the school. Okay, did the okay, state we give have... you that information? Wait a minute. 
Yes, we one have moment. one person speaking at a time and you must identify yourself. If you're going, there's a raise hand option. You can raise your hand. Um, please let's keep this one person speaking at a time. Please go on, Holly. No, that's this Whitney. Is, this oh, is Whitney. Me. Well, Holly was speaking, but okay, go ahead. Sorry. No, one this is her daughter was the one taking the test. I got failed by one question on the exam. I, I took the I took the written questions. I had seven of them and I got one wrong and I was sent home. And who told you, you may have, This is Arlene. You may have been asked about a particular question, but it doesn't mean that you only got one wrong. Um, I was asked about it. I got again, but so did another girl, and they were able to take the test. And Whitney, how long were you in there for? Not long, probably what, 15 minutes? I only took the, the written questions and then I was told to leave. I was in there for maybe 10 minutes. And that's with everybody being late after because the doors were supposed to close at a certain time and they were already 15 minutes late. Yeah. And I have, uh, this is Melissa again. I have another student sitting right here who's going to tell you the same thing. Yeah. <clears throat> multiple of us in there and they were only please state like your name so you have to state your full name please uh she doesn't have to state her full name because if she goes back to the test you're going to know who she is and that's not fair. no we that's the funny part this is jan o'neill we don't know your name we don't know where you're from we don't know what school you went we know you as number candidate number one candidate number two number three number we don't know three, any yes, information yes. about you you can, yeah, but you can look her up on my, on the on the school's website because they have they show pictures of every student that graduates. So I mean, this we is don't a different even world. know what this is, Arlene. We don't even know what school they went to, what state they are, went to. We all went. We to don't Miami. know if they're from Connecticut. Okay, I, I think at this point, in some, I, rather than continuing to hear um, all of the complaints that are forthcoming, I think this is highlighting in a potential issue. And I do think it needs um, to be looked at. Um, uh, Steve Carragher had his hands up. Um, Steve, would you like to speak? I, I did, I, th I think, and I don't know this for a fact, but I believe what the commenters are commenting on is with regard to the pre-exam questionnaire that the candidate needs to um, complete with the proctors with regard to how they sterilize their equipment. And if they do not answer those questions correctly or they're incomplete, then they're asked that candidate is dismissed from the exam because we're certainly not going to let somebody perform electrologist, electrology on an applicant or on a model with potentially contaminated uh, or non-sterilized equipment. So I think that's what they're referring to rather than saying you missed one or two. Um, but I th I think that's what the commenters are, are talking about. But um, I, I certainly don't want to put um, words into their mouths, but that's what they're talking about, I believe. That's it for me. That's Excuse very me. helpful. Thank you. I'm Jan O'Neill. I'd just like to make one comment. We do this to help the candidate take the test. We take them in the hallway and try to explain it better in case they're not good with it. But the only other option here is just let them take the test and the state grades it right then and there and the state handles it. We, we have no problem not asking many but more the, questions. We have no problem, you know, getting any more information. Me, but, but, but not let them take the test. We were told we could not let them take the test if they didn't have proper sterilization and, and infection control. That's why we have this pretest. Right. Well, I mean, you weren't you weren't told that the this exam is administered by the board. So that is a board standard. It's not something that no, the department that was said. Me. Steve, it's Arlene. That was me that said that. No, I know. I know. I'm oh. just saying it's the it's the board. It's the board's exam. And yeah, the board has yes, developed exactly. it and the board administers it. So when yeah. you say you were told. You weren't told anything. That was a standard that the board, uh, the board established. That, well, that's what I meant. I apologize. Okay. But, okay. but it, it it's, you know, it's to do properly what they're supposed to be doing. And, and, and Steve is uh, right. That's exactly the exam that they're talking about. And um, my name is 
Oh, my name is Jeannie Scranton Lloyd, and I'm on the board, and I uh, sort of represent the public. And uh, I've been going to these exams for many years just to make sure that, uh, you know, everything was really done nicely. And I have to say that the board members out of there and the proctors, they bend over backwards for these girls. And I've seen it every time, and I know it's difficult to, to fail an exam, but they have to make sure that these people, you know, know about sterilization and everything because, you know, the, every, they're, they're actually working on people's bodies. So really, the board and the proctors have done a wonderful job, and I have been there time after time making sure or just checking and to see that I was pleased at how they were doing it. And I was also an electrologist at one time, and so that I'm sort of part of both worlds, and um, I just want to make sure that everybody knows this. Thank you. Thank you, G. Alyssa Bro here. I just want to ask, too, why are some of these girls going to other states and passing their exams and not here? Why can somebody move and pass, but nobody well, can pass? That's here? irrelevant. I'm sorry, that, that's irrelevant. To this board. Are you a judge? <laughs> I'm an attorney. You are. Okay. Yes. Hi, this is Holly Southall. I do have a question. When were the open ended questions added to this exam? Possibly 25 uh, years ago. I don't know if it was quite that long, but it's been probably a good 20 years at least. I, I don't know, remember when. Okay, okay, thank um, you. Board Chair, I think that um, yeah. you have had some good public comment relative to some of the issues um, that are outstanding. Um, so I do understand um, Chris Andresen does want to sit with this board um, to see if there needs to be some changes made to the exam. That seems to be pending. Um, and he has his hand up right now. So I don't know if you want to add to that, Chris. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to just sort of bring it back to kind of what you were getting to right now, Stacy. is like, <clears throat> you know, I think this does warrant um, like a conversation with the board and the department to kind of look at the exam, look at how it's administered and look at how it's scored and um, just to review it. I mean, I, I appreciate the um, students and others that, you know, have shared their experience and their thoughts. Um, and I also appreciate the board who you know, volunteers to do this um, for the most part. So um, I, I look forward to kind of meeting with you and kind of hashing this out and seeing, you know, um, you know, what what's, you know, just to take a look at the examination and see how it can or may be able to be tweaked um, in case there's some work that needs to be done. Because it, it is, I mean, this is a very small um, profession. Um, you know, we license like 70 professions at the department, and this is this is a relatively small one. So um, it's not usually on the radar of, you know, uh, professions that we're dealing with. But um, I think that this is an opportunity for us to kind of take a look at this um, and, and see what's, you know, take a look at the exam and review it and see how we move forward. So thank you. Uh, and I think um, the public comment was very valuable today. Um, I Are think you? that the board will be able to look at uh, the exam with uh, a, a new perspective and different lens. Um, and I think that um, the pre-exam questionnaire um, that was um, spoken about by uh, Steve Carragher, I think that also could, um, you could review that as well, but that might provide some explanation um, as to why um, some of the students feel that they are being dismissed early on. Um, Tyra, uh, El Lascola, your name is up. Your hand is up. Yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. My name is El Lascola. I am an electrology student. I have not taken the exam yet. However, I have spoken to multiple people who have, and they all report, and Jan has confirmed in this meeting, that you are... Uh, when you were dismissed from the exam, you are not told why it was that you were dismissed. You're not told what you got wrong. And I'm wondering, why is that? I feel like 
students should be told why it was they failed the exams so that they can study up and improve for when they take it again in the future. I think that's good input. Um, communication is key. So um, again, something else that maybe um, we'll put the that board can take yes. into account. Thank you. Thank okay, you. I don't want to. I don't, I don't want the board to have to belabor this issue, but I think some very good points have been made. So for the board chair, uh, right now I yes. do see that Tyra Peluso's hand is up, and yes. um, you can conclude in whatever fashion yes. you. Before I just that. before we take Tyra's comments, I, I, this was very um, enlightening. Um, hearing from the public, um, hearing from Steve, these are all points of that we need to come to come together on um, as a licensing. To get the license for the for the uh, electrologist, we want the best possible electrologist out there, and I'm sure that you all will be. Um, but we, as a public state, we're, our job is public safety. So this is a crossword crossroads of where licensing and safety come in together. So this is something that deserves much more attention, and we will make do do you know due diligence. Um, so thank you for your comments, all, um, and I'd like to hear from Tyra. Thank you for raising your hand. Oh, thank you, Dr. Zalka. I'm not sure if it's appropriate. I just wanted to ask if you would like um, any of the members of the public to submit anything in writing. If you did, I could provide a location for them to do so. Um, or if you think that what is provided verbally is sufficient, that is fine too. I just wanted to make that option you. for you. I feel like that I have uh, enough information. I think the board has heard all of these comments. If um, I can leave it up to um, them if they feel like making notes and, and sending them to you, but I feel like we've uh, had sufficient information and it's been very enlightening. Um, so for me, I feel like I'm I'm fine. I can ask uh, the rest of the board members what their feeling is. I'm fine with it, Arlene. I'm fine with it, Jeannie Scranton Lloyd. <laughs> I'm fine with it, Jan O'Neill. So thank you again for all your comments. The, these are things we take very seriously and we will do further investigation. Uh, so thank you, Tara, I think we're, we're, we're good. Um, so without further ado, I will, um, unless there are any other comments, I will could call I, the meeting. Yep, please go could ahead. Could I just ask, Chris, are we gonna do executive session now or no to talk about the, the two things? No, I believe he said he wanted to set up a meeting with board. Oh, members. okay. Then yeah. he said he didn't think about executive session, so I just didn't know. Okay, yeah. Gonna... I think that would give us time to prepare, you know, properly. Um, yeah, I need a Mr. Time thank you so much thank you. for being with us this 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 morning. Very helpful. Your insights very helpful, and and everyone on who was on the call. Thank you so much. So I will call adjournment until we meet again on May eighth. It's ten seventeen a.m. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Thank Thanks you. Thanks all for your input. Appreciate it.